Vivian Hoffman and I'm going to talk about Paganini's secret. What is Paganini's secret? Paganini always said, I have a secret. Frequently in my presence, Paganini has hinted that when he tired of his public career, he may one day be induced to communicate to the world a secret, the existence of which is little suspected by musical conservatories. A secret of such wonderful efficacy that by means of it a pupil may aspire to a degree of perfection attainable by one who, pursuing the ordinary method, should devote ten years to practice the greater part of each day. But to us living in the 21st century, it seems as if he took a secret with him into his grave. However, he didn't. He left us his 24 caprices. But for us normal mortals, what he left in his 24 caprices does seem a bit cryptic as far as his secret is concerned. It does take a genius like Ruggiero Ricci to figure out the essence of the secret and develop a method which one can work with to improve one's left hand violin technique quickly. A shortcut to left hand violin technique. When my system will be known, artists will commence to study the nature of the violin far more thoroughly for it is an instrument a hundred times richer than is generally supposed. My discovery is not due to sheer accident, but the result of thorough research. One day they will come to my system of studying. I studied with Ruggiero Ricci, and because his classes were public, I also watched many hundred hours of him teaching. He showed me this method, and he made me practice the exercises. And I was amazed at how fast my left hand technique improved. Suddenly I could play things I never thought I'd be able to play. Even the most difficult pieces, like the solo sonatas by Isai, suddenly became playable. <laughs> developed Roger Ricci's method to be suitable for beginners because Mr. Ricci always said this should be taught right from the start, right from the beginning. Beginners should learn the shortcut to left hand violin technique. In the very first notes of his first caprice, Paganini is already telling us what we have to work at. Position, you can see that Paganini is telling us we have to work at expanding the hand this way and reaching over to the G string like this. Now nobody is going to expect a beginner to even be able to play just those first four notes of Paganini's first caprice, but we can work at stretching the hand, expanding the hand this way and reaching over this way. And this is important because most intonation problems that a beginner has are not because they can't hear, it's because they can't stretch, they can't reach the notes for a beginner. In first position, just going from fourth finger E to second finger C is already a stretch. Very often the second finger C will be too sharp or the fourth finger E will be too flat. That's not because the person can't hear, it's because the hand is not stretched. The same thing. 
if you're going from fourth finger A on the D string to second finger C on the A string and you want to play them together, that is already a stretch for an untrained hand. The fourth finger will slide down towards the second finger because the hand will try to get out of this stretch and the fourth finger will be too flat. So you see, if one doesn't practice stretches, one's going to have intonation problems all the time, no matter how well one hears. So this is what we're going to work at in Paganini's Secret. We're going to work at stretching the hand this way, widening the hand at the base joints of the fingers, and we're going to work at reaching over with our fourth finger onto the G string in a way that it arches over the other strings that they can resonate freely. Paganini was famous for his left hand pizzicato. is one of the best exercises for the left hand. It trains the weak part of the hand, third and fourth finger. It also corrects the hand position because the fingers have to come from above the string and it strengthens your fingers and makes them independent and fast. So for those of you who want to start the shortcut to left hand violin technique right now, here's a left hand pizzicato exercise for you. The best way to practice left hand pizzicato is slowly without the bow because you want to be able to concentrate on your left hand. Just pluck four finger B with your right hand and that fourth finger plucks second finger G sharp and that second finger G sharp plucks the open E string. Then again you pluck fourth finger B with your right hand. That fourth finger B plucks third finger A and that third finger A plucks first finger F sharp. on all four strings. Careful not to practice it too long, otherwise you'll get blisters, just one or two minutes at first. A good way of practicing it is to practice it on a different string every day and do that for a few weeks and see what it does. Another clue Paganini left us in his 24 Caprices is to have a chordal approach to playing the violin. <laughs> That probably came from the influence of him also having been a guitarist. Guitarists learn the instrument in chords first and only later in scales. We violinists never do that. We don't play chords until we're quite advanced and then when we first come across a chord it seems unbelievably difficult for us. Yes, chords are difficult. But having a chordal approach to learning the violin right from the start has huge advantages. First of all, it teaches our ear to hear harmonically, which is also something we violinists never do because we have a melody instrument. It's not like we play the guitar or the piano. So this teaches us to hear harmonically, which helps with intonation. And playing double stops is not only good for intonation, but it's also self-correcting for the hand position. So in Paganini's Secret, we work at chords and double stops right from the beginning. This is why in Ricci's class, we always had to practice solo Bach. We always had to have some solo Bach sonatas 
partitas in our repertoire ready to play for him because Bach also had a chordal approach to his music. And practicing solo Bach will accelerate your progress. It doesn't matter what level you play on. You don't have to start with something like the Chacon. Some of the movements are not so difficult. There's even one movement which doesn't even require any shifts. You can play it in first position. So solo Bach is something which one should start working on also very early in one's violin playing life because that will accelerate your progress a lot. In Paganini's Secret, we are specifically targeting what is difficult. And to give you some special guidance, especially if you haven't been playing the violin for very long yet, I've turned myself into a beginner again by making my left hand play with the bow and my right hand play on the strings. And I will be accompanying you with practicing videos where I practice all the exercises as a beginner and show you how one practices Paganini technique as a beginner, as an experiment. And because I wanted to find out just how much of a shortcut this method really is for beginners, I played some of Küchler's Concertino in G major. Terrible. I couldn't play it at all. Then I spent eight weeks practicing the Paganini Technique exercises. I didn't practice anything else, just the exercises, and after eight weeks I tried that same bit again. Everything was better. My hand was stretched. I could reach the notes. My intonation had improved and my fingers were faster. And even my bow technique had improved, although I didn't practice bow technique at all. I only practiced the left hand exercises. But playing on two strings most of the time also improves your bow technique a lot. And I felt so much more comfortable playing that bit it seemed a lot less difficult. I would like to invite you to join me in Paganini's Secret. Because these exercises are so specific and unique, this is suitable for beginners, intermediate players and advanced players. Learn the shortcut to left hand violin technique. Learn efficient practicing to get results quickly and take lessons with me on the secrets of Paganini.